Today we're going to talk about the active band pass filters. And how do we get an active band pass filter? We're going to cascade the low pass and the high pass filter. That means we're going to make use of a low pass filter and a high pass filter to basically create a band pass filter. There's a few formulas you should know. For my critical frequency FC1, I'm going to use that formula. For my critical frequency FC2, I'm going to use that formula. And for my center frequency, I'm going to use that formula. If my components are again equal, if R and C are equal, I can use that for my critical frequency. All right. FC1 is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi RC. Right, how do we do it? I got a two pole high pass filter and I got a two pole low pass filter. All right, you can also use a single pole filter, it's only going to vary the, the drop off there. All right, because it's a two pole, I will have minus 40 dB per decade. But there's one quite important thing you must remember if I'm going to look at my high pass filter response, the blue response. That is my high pass filter response. That means the critical frequency for the high pass filter, remember the critical frequency for the high pass filter is FC1. All right. Because that is the response of the high pass filter. That means FC1 is for the high pass filter, not um, FC2, because normally you think high, high frequency, you're going to use FC2. Please remember. The critical frequency for my high pass filter is FC1, all right? And the critical frequency for the low pass filter is FC2 because there is the low pass filter response. Everybody with me? I repeat, the critical frequency for my high pass filter is FC1. The critical frequency for my low pass filter is FC2, all right? All right, and there is basically... A sailing key uh, two pole high pass, and there's a sailing key two pole low pass, and that will basically create my band pass response. All right. Any, any questions? Any questions? Huh? The next filter, it's a multiple feedback band pass filter. Why they call it the multiple feedback? Because we got more than one feedback um, circuit there. You can see here, yeah, there I got a feedback circuit and there I got a feedback circuit. That's why they call it a multiple feedback band pass filter. They say another type of filter configuration shown in figure 15.18 is a multiple feedback band pass filter. The, feed, the two feedback paths are through R1 and C1. Components R1 and C1 provides the low pass response, and R2 and C2 provides the high pass response. The maximum gain uh, uh, AO occurs at the center frequency. Q values of less than 10 are typical for this type of filter. All right, then they give us the, the equation for my center frequency. There's the equation for the center frequency. And they, there's all the formulas. I'm not going to waste time with these formulas, but there's all the formulas for calculating your resistor and capacitor values. You can use those for your resistor and capacitor values. Just remember about my Q factor. And this thing they say we normally got a Q factor less than 10. That means it will be basically a wide band pass filter. Not a narrow band, but a wide band. If my Q factor is less than 10, 
it's going to be a wide band, band pass filter. All right, there's an example. Example um, 15.6, they say determine the center frequency, maximum gain, and bandwidth, bandwidth for the filter in figure 15.9. All right, there's a filter, it's already been designed. You must now just go and determine the center frequency, the maximum gain, and the bandwidth for that filter. First of all, they calculate FO, and they get a value of 736 hertz. Then they calculate the gain. AO is R2 divided by 2R1, and that will give me a value of 1,32. Calculate the Q factor, and you can notice the Q factor is 4,16. As I already mentioned, there is a wide band band pass filter, not a narrow uh, band pass filter. The bandwidth is 177 hertz. Any questions? Any questions? The next one is our state variable filter. Now the state variable filter consists out of basically a summing amplifier and two integrators. All right. What outputs do we have? We've got three outputs in this case. We've got a high pass output, we've got a band pass output, and we've got a low pass output. That means your state variable filter will give you basically three outputs. The basic operation is nicely explained in the book. You can read through that. But that is my, my state variable filter. I repeat, you've got three outputs. High pass, a band pass, and a low pass output. And it consists of a summing amplifier and two integrators. There is basically the response of, of the state variable filter. You can see there, I got a low pass again, and I got a high pass again, and that is my band pass output. They say FC and F, um, FC is equal to FO. And there is also the formula for my Q factor of that filter. Let's have a look at the example. There's an example. Example 15.7. Determine the center frequency, Q, and bandwidth for the band pass output of the state variable filter. All the values have been given. We must just go and calculate the center frequency, the Q factor, and the bandwidth. Right, if we have a look, uh, FC, my critical frequency, we work that out, get a value of 7,23 kilohertz. They say that center frequency is approximately equal to the critical frequency of the integrators. That's why we can say FO is equal to FC, and that's also equal to 7,23 kilohertz. The Q factor, you can see we've got a fairly high Q factor. We've got a Q factor of 33,7 that indicates also quite a narrow band filter. All right, not a wide band, but a narrow band. The bandwidth is equal to 215 hertz, 215 hertz. Any questions? The next filter is the bi-quad filter. 
They say the bicot filter is similar to the state variable filter, except that it consists of an integrator followed by an inverting amplifier and another integrator, as shown in figure 15.23. If we have a look here, I got an integrator, I got an inverting amplifier, and I got a, another integrator. In this case, we will have a band pass output and a low pass output. This thing got two outputs. They say these differences in the configuration between biquat and state variable filter result in some operational differences. Allow, although both allow a very high Q value. In the biquat filter, the bandwidth is independent of the Q. Uh, is independent and the Q is dependent on the critical frequency. However, in the state variable filter, it's just the opposite. The bandwidth is dependent and the Q is independent on the critical frequency. Also, the bicot filter provides only band pass and low pass outputs. All right. Right, now we're going to look at the active band stop filters. There's the active band stop filter. There is my multiple feedback band stop filter. Also, more than one uh, feedback there. There is a band stop filter. And we can also basically use a state variable filter to make a band stop filter. How do we do that? We're going to use a summing amplifier and the state variable filter. That means what do we do? We take the low pass and the high pass outputs of the state variable filter, we put it through a summing amplifier and it will give me a band stop output. All right. I repeat, we take the state variable filters, low pass and high pass outputs, through a summing amplifier, and that will give me a band stop filter. All right, filter response measurements. Filter response measurements. If you look at this filter response measurements, we know, what does a filter do? What does a filter do? In plain, what does a filter do? Any, anybody? It actually attenuates certain frequencies, all right. That means if I look at a, a low pass filter, what will happen to a low pass filter? It will pass the low frequencies and start attenuating the higher frequencies. If I look at the high pass filter, what, what will that do? It will... Um, uh, attenuate low frequencies and pass the higher frequencies. All right. Now, if we have a look at the, this setup here, I got a sine wave generator. I measure the input, I measure the output. All right. Here's my filter. Now, depending on the frequency of this generator, will determine what the output will be. All right. We also did a practical experiment in the lab where we determine the critical frequency of the filter. All right. I'm going to tell you how to do it. If you still do it in the practical, then you'll be able to do it. All right. Right, let's have a look. Here is a response of a low pass <coughs> filter. <coughs> low pass filter, pass low frequency and attenuate high frequencies. All right. 
let's assume, let's make this FC, for example, 10 kilohertz. Let's say my critical frequency here is equal to 10 kilohertz. All right, that is my critical frequency. You with me? Now, what are we going to do? We're going to actually do the following. Right, there we got our oscilloscope. Here's our filter. We got a low pass filter. All right. We make this a variable. A variable. Um, we can take the signal generator or a function generator. We got a signal in there, and we know that is 10 kilohertz, the critical frequency. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to go, let's say, here. Let's say somewhere there. Let's say there is 5 kilohertz. Now, if I apply 5 kilohertz, what will happen? I will have basically everything should go through the filter without attenuation, all right? Now, what you will do, you will set this output or the amplitude in such a way that my oscilloscope give me, for example, let's say 10 divisions, all right? I will have a sine wave 10 divisions at a frequency of 5 kilohertz, all right? Now, what happens now? Now, what will I do? I will move in this direction. That means I will start increasing my frequency, all right? And if you start increasing the frequency, what will happen? If you come close to 10 kilohertz, what will, the amp what will happen to the amplitude? What will happen to the amplitude? It will start decreasing, all right? And when that amplitude decreased around about 70% of the original value, all right? Let's say it was 10 divisions, and now it should be seven, say around about 7 divisions, all right? And you measure the frequency of that, it should be equal to 10 kilohertz. If your filter is working correctly, it should be equal to 10 kilohertz. You with me? I will repeat. I will go to 5, I will set my function generator at 5 kilohertz, and I will adjust the amplitude here so that I get, let's say, 10 divisions. All right. Doesn't matter what a voltage is, 10 divisions nicely. And now, then I will start increasing the frequency in that direction. And I will notice as I increase the frequency, the amplitude will start decreasing. And when that amplitude decreases to 70%, and I measure the frequency, then that frequency should be 10 kilohertz or in the region of 10 kilohertz. All right, you with me? That is for the, for the low pass filter. All right, let's go and have a look at the high pass filter. What are we going to do there? All right, there's our high pass filter. Again, the same, the same arrangement. What are we going to do? We're going to do the following. Let's say again, we've got our function generator. That's variable. We've got our filter. And we take the output of the filter to oscilloscope. There's my high pass, high pass filter response. I make this again a variable. All right. But now, let's say we can sh still have the same critical frequency. Let's say we make it 10 kilohertz. All right. But now, what will we do now? Will we go to lower than 10 or higher than 10? We will go higher than, than 10. Let's say we go here. Let's say there is around about 15 kilohertz. All right. Now, it's around about 15 kilohertz. And now, again, I will set... Uh, amplitude of around about 10 divisions, all right? That'll be my amplitude, will be around about 10 divisions. And now I will do what? 
Well, I still increase the frequency, I'll decrease. Now I'm going to move backwards. I will start decreasing from 15 in the direction of 10. All right, what will happen now? As I decrease my frequency, when I come close to 10 kilohertz, I will notice my amplitude will start decreasing. All right. When it decreased around about 70% of the original value, and I measure that, it should give me around about 10 kilohertz. All right. That means all the fil uh, filter is doing, if I the filter will attenuate certain frequencies. All right. Are you with me? Any questions? Any questions? All right. We finish with chapter chapter 15. That means now you're ready for your next test, and we will discuss when we're going to write our next test. We will do it now.